Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, start the mounting process for the new KB Electronics uh, Genesis drive that I, that I purchased and came uh, last Friday uh, uh, onto the Jet 10x24 lathe. Uh, what I've done is I've gone to a friend's place, he cut me out a piece of uh, aluminum, uh, oh, quarter inch aluminum. I'm going to put mounting screws on the aluminum so I can mount the, uh, the drive to the aluminum plate and then the back of the aluminum plate will be mounted to the on spacers to the back of the uh, 10 by 24 drive headstock area. So I'm going to just uh, spray some glue on the pattern. This is the pattern that came with the drive and I'll put a little bit of spray glue on it and mount it to the mount it to the aluminum plate. Doesn't need much, just a little bit. And we'll just mount her in here like so. That's a, that spray adhesive is really good because it gives you the opportunity to just pull it off and reposition if you're not happy with the position of it. And the plate, of course, is a little bit larger than the template because the cover over the the drive I, has uh, takes up some room, so that looks like a good spot there. I'll just put in the drill holes for the the tap. Onto the crosshairs. The wood stove creaking in the background. It's a beautiful day here on Vancouver Island, but um, still chilly. I have to go out and mow the lawn in a couple of days if the weather keeps up the way it's going. There, got holes, so I'm going to head out to the drill press and I'll drill the holes in the drill okay, press. Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the vacuum plate onto the lathe. With the lathe being mounted on uh, uh, casters right now, it tends to want to slide. So that takes care of that one. And I can go in here. Excellent. Done deal. I'll just uh, enlarge these holes on the mounting plate, put a, a, a countersink on there, and uh, then we'll come and check the mounting. And I'll have to tap the mounting well. plate. It's going to sit like this, and will be bolted on with uh, uh, flathead cap screws, like so. These, these fellows here, socket head flathead cap screws, will so be nice and flush for the uh, variable speed drive uh, drive to actually mount on there. And the drive will mount in this position here. So it makes all the wiring very easily. Because of the size, the quarter 20 uh, tap is what I'm going to be using here. I'm going to actually use this to, to tap this one. And I have started this tap, so let's we'll see how it goes. It's going into cast iron. So the tapping is quite nice and I don't need any cutting fluid. Now, I did tap the other holes in the aluminum without cutting fluid. The cutting fluid I probably would have used would have been WD-40 because that's about all it's good for. But, uh, yeah, so this this cuts quite nicely. And I'm not going to keep that going and I'll just tap it like so. And this is probably boring as can be watching somebody tap three holes in a back of the lathe, but you get the picture that tapped in there quite nicely actually. Done the deal.
Okay, the plate is now mounted on, as you can see. It uh, mounted on pretty good. I had to put a couple of spacers in the back because the, uh, I think you can just see the spacers in there now. The, uh, the, the back of the lathe is curved. This is curved. So it wasn't flat. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted the aluminum plate on there. The other reason for the aluminum plate is that any heat that is created by the variable frequency drive can be dissipated by the, alum by the aluminum. And, uh, <laughs> and that's why I wanted also the spacing behind here so that there can be some air movement up through there. Yeah, oops, I should focus that a little better. That is why I wanted the, uh, uh, the aluminum and the spacers because any heat that is created by the variable frequency drive can come up the back and, and help cool the variable frequency drive so it isn't mounted on something um, that will impede the transfer of heat. The cast iron would do the same thing, of course, but the cast iron wasn't flat. So now I've got a flat surface for the variable frequency drive and it's mounted on a non-flat surface. So the next thing is uh, mount the drive, secure everything really good, mount the drive, and then uh, do the wiring. Okay, I've got the KB electronics drive mounted on the, the back of the, uh, the head, headstock of the lathe uh, where the pulleys are. You can just see it in here. I'll see if I can get in here a little further, a little closer. Now, some of the wires that you're looking at, they connect to the power switch. And the power switch would have been located right here, and I've taken it off. And the variable frequency uh, control uh, potentiometer was located here. Okay, this is the, the jet lathe again, and this is the way the, the lathe came when I bought it. And it had for the controls to turn the motor on, it had stop, reverse, and forward, and this little box was mounted here. And I guess it worked okay, uh, actually, because the way the motor was, original motor was wired in, it didn't work worth a hoot. Um, and I think I explained that earlier in another video. So this is going to be... Now I've got an uh, aluminum sheet with the, the orange or red colored uh, um, lamino, lamicoid, I think it's called, that they use for making um, badge labels and that sort of thing. So my plan is to put the emergency stop switch right at this location and oops, as I drop it on the floor and the forward reverse and stop the switch would be at this location and the the variable speed control would be at this location. This white paper represents the area inside that is it recessed in the cast and to give you an idea what the inside of the the area looks like you can see the inset right here and this is actually a box this is an enclosed box so it's protected from any spray from oil from the the gear train and this is the the connector this is a new style connector that i will use for flexible conduit and this is the old version here which was metric and so i'm going to proceed to drill the holes double check where i want want everything mounted and i'll drill the holes and uh, we'll see where we go from there and that will go there so i'll have forward stop reverse switch right there uh, and uh, the, i can adjust the speed with the variable speed and a, a lock stop which is just a, a continuation of this stop button but when it's pushed it will lock it and but in order to turn the power on and off to the variable frequency drive i i mounted a box in here just a, a little uh, uh, plastic utility box for electronics and i'm going to have this main switch off on mounted this uh, label mounted right here and the switch will be mounted like so and I've done it opposite what normally would be because usually you always turn up for on and down for off but what I want to do here is I want to mount it so that if I wanted to put it off um, for an emergency or because I just wanted to power off really quick I could just go in and hit the switch and push it in and it was not very likely something's going to come in behind it to turn the power on so Anyway, that's all for this short segment of the video, and uh, I'll, when I get the wiring done, I'll do another video to show how it's all wired in. 
Okay, I've got the control panel that is replacing the switches uh, completed and wired. I put a Molex connector in here so that I can I can uh, disconnect the, uh, the the switches and the potentiometer that controls the speed. And this is what the front looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it here off camera because you guys don't want to see waste time watching me just mount something. And it is going to be a little tricky to mount, uh, I have to say. Uh, and then uh, after it's mounted, I'll, I'll take a picture of the completed installation. The next thing I will be getting on to is going to be the wiring all of these switches, etc., into the variable frequency drive. Okay, here it is in a nutshell. This is the controller that was located in here as per the video I did just shortly and with the forward off reverse switch. This is the new electronic uh, uh, variable frequency drive control and, and the, variable, the variable frequency drive is mounted at the back of the headstock. So I've got reverse stop forward, I got my speed control, I've got a, a lock stop so when I push that in it is locked and so these switches won't work. I have to flip that over and it's back operating again. And this is the on off switch as well. So that's done. All I have to do now is wire into the controller and uh, give her a smoke test. Oh, don't know what happened there, but we'll go around. Maybe I'm low on batteries. We'll go around the front and we'll give it a try. And we let you see what it looks like at the front. And I'll turn the power on. I heard a relay click. I don't see any smoke coming. Okay, let's try turn it to forward. Oh yeah. Oh, is that nice? Okay. Oh yeah, there's a squeal to the, the thing, but I think that might be the driver for the... Uh, let's just adjust the film here. Yeah, oh, that is very slick. Yes. Yes, that is nice, and the direction is right. Very nice. I'm happy with that. Okay, goes down quite low. I followed the manual and I adjusted a trim plot uh, to, so it wouldn't go to zero, but I don't know... If I adjusted it right, I'll have to try, and we'll try stop, reverse, and the same thing in reverse. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that is just so slick. That is just so slick, and that looks pretty good. I like the look of that, too. And let's check and see if there's any smoke coming out the back. No. Nope. Everything looks okay there. It's got a squeal to it, but that's about it.